and the betterment of the lives of the people on the ground, whether the workers, the women, the children, et cetera, et cetera. Thank you so much. That, uh, Dr. Eddie, uh, we have just two, three minutes to be together. So, uh, conclusively, yeah, from you, uh, Professor uh, Nubong, let's get your concluding statement by answering this question on how African uh, countries can safeguard their economic uh, interests and minimize uh, the negative uh, impacts of uh, geopolitical influence. One minute, please. I think we need to start talking more and more in terms of our strategic interests. I think we need to start articulating um, questions around our place in the world and the things that matter to us and, and how international agreements and our engagement with our bilateral and multilateral partners needs to go directly to uh, serve our interests. So discuss with the European Union around market access to European day to European market for products that Africa has the potential to export. Uh, have conversational trading partners about uh, growing and, and increasing participation in global production value chains. We do not want to just export cocoa, but we also want a chunk of the chocolate production value chain. And I think that we have to be very uh, clear in identifying where they, 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 we have leverage uh, to grow uh, our influence and grow our participation in global trade and economic processes. And to be very clear about uh, asking uh, uh, and the building capacity to participate in those processes. The classical argument is to start from where we have a, a comparative advantage, which is in the ownership of natural resources. And, and I think that it should be us being able to say that we want to share the cake. We no longer want to just uh, ship, uh, put the raw stones and ship them off. We want to be able to add value so that we can be able to retain value. And, and that has to become part of our our, our conversation as uh, articulation of a strategic interest. I think let me just stop at that for the time uh, uh, allocation that you have given me to give a chance to the other part, part, uh, panelists to be able to contribute. Of course, thank you so much, uh, Professor Gabriela Nubong. Uh, one last statement from you, uh, uh, Mr. Elijah Enoko, of course. Uh, I would like that you conclude by actually analyzing on the aspect of the political will, we know that if the African economy has to uh, be buoyant and if Africa has to uh, take advantage of the geopolitical game, uh, there is need for a strong political will to be able to maximize these opportunities. So what are the stakes for our political leaders and also economic stakeholders across Africa? We need leaders that can take the bull by the horns. That's just as plain as it is. We need leaders that can take the bull by the horns. We need a leader like Paul Kagame that can go to the uh, United Nations Development Index Conference and say, we want to put a policy in place that says, no raw product is leaving Africa as raw product. It must be semi-finished. There's no reason why cocoa cannot be finished, semi-finished in Africa before being sent to Europe. There's no reason why Iron ore cannot be semi-finished in Africa before being sent to Europe. There's no reason why. There's no reason. Africa has the capacity to do semi-finished products. That is where we get killed, because all what Africa could have done is being done in Europe and Western world and so on, and then we lose the economic benefits of that. We need leaders that can take the bull by the horns and call a spade a spade. So when we have leaders like that, I'm telling you the truth. You know, we have people in South Africa like, you know, Julius Malema that I don't really agree with all, everything he says, but... If you have political independence without economic independence, you are still colonized. You're still colonized. That's the problem in Africa. So if the political will is there to take the bull by the horns and call it spade a spade in Africa, I'm telling you that the Western world will listen. They will come to the table and know that these guys are not joking anymore. They know their capacity. They, have the, they know their prowess. They know what they are able to deliver. We have to take shape. And they will adjust. I'm telling you, they are adjust. But if you go fragmented and then uh, South Africa is being pulled there by BRICS, and then you have Kenya being pulled by the U.S., you have this one being pulled by France, you have Cote d'Ivoire that is in the pockets of uh, uh, Macron, you have this one 